is increasingly an urban place. More than half our planet's citizens live in cities. These cities are engines of innovation and economic activity, and they can be good for the planet too, because densely packed cities thrive on buses, trains and subway systems rather than cars. But all of this would be impossible without one of the most underrated inventions of the past two centuries. It's the lift. And if you'll forgive a little self-obsession here at Newsnight, we've been thinking a lot about lifts recently. We've just moved to New Broadcasting House, a brand new building, but there's a problem with the lifts. It takes a long time for them to arrive. And when they do, they're packed like sardines and you can't get on. So how do engineers decide how many lifts go into a building and how hard can it be to get it right? The number of lifts are defined by the population of the building. So an office building may have you know, thousands of people in the building at any one time, all wanting to get to their desk in a, in a very short space of time because they're, they're at work, they need to get there. Um, a hotel has different arrival periods, may need less elevators. Why don't we just put more lifts in buildings so people don't have to wait so long? Uh, the reason why we don't put uh, more elevators in because the more elevators they take up more space um, that's less space for the office and less rent for the landlord. But there's more to the business of elevatoring than choosing the right number of lifts although that's not a bad start. A modern elevator installation uses computers monitoring every lift call button and coordinating the response of every lift in the building. That may not sound like the world's toughest problem there's a lot for the computer to think about. In a tall building with 20 lift call buttons pressed and eight lifts, there are over a billion, billion different ways for the computer to send the lifts off to respond. And since nobody likes a sluggish lift, it all has to be done in a 50th of a second. If only there was somebody we could turn to. Somebody who could solve all of our elevator-based problems. Big. Or small. Dear Lift Doctor, Sometimes I press the button and I can see the lift coming, but it goes right past me. Why does the lift hate me? The computer sees all the calls and all the lifts and it knows there might be some other people who've been waiting longer than you and what it's trying to do is minimise the waiting for everyone. So by letting you wait for the next lift, it might overall be much better for everyone. Dear Lift Doctor, I work in a busy building. In the morning, everyone comes in at the same time and we're all hanging around in the lobby for the occasional lift to arrive and let a few of us in. Help us! You've only got one button on the ground floor and so only one lift is sent and all the other lifts are left around the building. Um, so one of the solutions is to make sure that all the empty cars always are brought back to the ground floor. Dear Lift Doctor, what really seems to be causing the trouble are all the trips to the office cafeteria. People come in, take the lift, drop off their coats and then take the lift twice more to get to the cafe and back. What can you do? One of the things would be to give free tea and coffee on the floors, then people don't make extra trips to the cafeteria. It's annoying to have to wait an extra minute for a lift, but a really big building with a poorly designed elevator system will keep you waiting a lot longer than that, 5, 10 or 15 minutes. In a skyscraper, the lifts have to be perfect. Modern skyscrapers, such as London's Heron Tower, often use a destination control system, so we swipe a card, we enter our destination. Which in English means that you tell the elevator computer which floor you need and it assigns you a particular elevator. It's like a taxi share instead of a bus. The system uh, will, will group uh, travellers together to a set number of floors. So the benefit of the system is it will travel to those set number of floors without stopping everywhere, which a conventional system would do. These are double-decker elevators. Is that common? It is far more common in London now, we're seeing the, the taller buildings designed this way because it's a very efficient method of moving large amounts of people in a very short space of time. 
So this is the cutting edge, what's next? Uh, the, 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 the new technology, we're seeing uh, twin elevators, which is very similar to this, but it has a, uh, the cars are separated, i.e. in the same shaft, but one car is operated independently from the other car. Same principle, moves lots of people. There's one final element for the conscientious elevator scientist to consider. These lifts aren't moving cargo, they're moving people. And that means trouble. The BBC building managers at New Broadcasting House complain that there's nothing wrong with the lifts. It's just that the users are doing it wrong. Apparently we overuse some banks of elevators and underuse others. Well in the future, our robot overlords will take care of all that. It may be the security card that you carry to get into the building will already have your preferred floor coded into it. And then when you swipe your card through whatever entry device, like a turnstile, the turnstile will have a screen embedded in it that gives you the elevator assignment. And then all you'll have to do is walk over to the elevator bank and get into the elevator. You won't have to touch anything. Cities are getting bigger, buildings are getting taller, computers are getting faster, and people are getting busier. And that can only mean one thing. The dawn of the new age of the intelligent elevator is only just beginning. <laughs>